Today I'll be showing you how to put video inside of your text in HitFilm. Today's video tutorial is going to be rated 1 star out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It's going to be super easy for beginners. But before we begin today's video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more video editing and HitFilm tutorials like this. And follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films for more constant updates than I can give on YouTube. Also, make sure to enter the Shiny Films 15k short film competition. Entries are due on the 5th of January 2018, and there are over $500 worth of prizes, so really make sure that you give it a shot. I'll leave a link to the entry video in the description below if you want to find out more. Anyway, let's get into this video tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need, and the only thing you're going to need, is the video clip that you want to use as the background inside your text. So I've got it in my media panel here, it can also be in your editor. Either way, just right click on it and press make composite shot. And just hit OK, no need to worry about the details. This will create a composite shot which is different to the editor because it's more useful for compositing and stacking layers one on top of another, which is what we're going to be doing right now because we're going to be adding our text. So just go new layer right here and then hit text and you can select your text box size. I'm going to set mine to be 1920, which is the width of my comp, and a size of 500, but you can always change this later. Then once you've got your text layer, just go to the text tool up here, and make sure you click inside your, inside your text box and just start typing. As you can see, I've already got my own custom font and font size down, but if you don't, then just go and highlight your text and go into the text panel down here, you might have to Go right a little bit if it's all the way over here or it might be somewhere up there, depends on your layout. Just make sure you're in the text panel and then you can change font, font size, and I'm just gonna change my paragraph alignment real quick to make sure it's centered. Also, the color doesn't matter because we'll be completely changing the color later anyway, so don't worry about that. Also, I should just let you know if you do wanna change your text box size, make sure you're in the text tool and just drag on the bottom right-hand corner here to change the text box size. Anyway, if you don't need to do that and you're done with your text, just hit the selection tool right here and you've got your text. Now we're gonna learn how to put the video inside of it. It's actually a really simple process and it just involves one effect. Just create a new layer and create a new plain layer, which is just a flat color layer, really. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna name it plain because that's a really good name. And you can choose a color, white, mid gray, black, you can drop a color if you want, or you can just choose a custom color by clicking on the color here. I'm just gonna make mine a pure white to keep it nice and simple. And I'm just going to hit okay. Now comes the fun part. Go to the effects panel and search up for the set matte effect. Once you've got that, just drag it onto the plain layer. Nothing happens immediately, that's because we have to customize it. So go into the controls and open up the set matte effect. Your controls might be down here, might be, you know, controls could be in different places for you depending on your workspace. But once you've got your effects panel open and you've got your set matte effect open, just set your source layer to be that text. And you'll notice that now this plane layer has kind of adjusted itself so that it's only visible where the text was. Because you see, if we hide the plane layer and we hide the text, nothing's visible. If we show the text, that's where the text is. And if we show the plane, it kind of looks like the text now. So make sure you keep the text hidden and just all you gotta do is instead of keeping it on replace, just make sure it's subtract. And that way it'll subtract the text from the plane and you'll get this white background or whatever color you chose with the text inside it behind here. Alternatively, you can also keep it on replace and just hit invert, but you know, whatever floats your boat, I prefer to keep it on subtract because why not? But make sure you don't delete your text because it uses this as a reference. So don't delete it, just keep it hidden and non-visible. So that's the basics of it, but as you noticed in the little example I gave, I also have this animation where it kind of comes down uh, and it shows itself in a really cool way. And this is something that is a little bit more complicated, but I'm still gonna show you how to do in this second part of the tutorial. So what you can do is just open up your text layer, just open up transform, which is like position, scale, rotation, that kind of thing. And we're going to start doing some keyframing. So keyframing is pretty much a way of animation where you set keyframes, which I'll explain to you now. So I'm going to go one second in. You can use this time here uh, and just change the third zero from the back to be one, and that's your one second in. You can also just drag the slider to choose a custom time if you want. I'm gonna go one second directly, and then I'm just going to 
press this little icon next to scale. And this little circle appears blue, it's got this little blue circle inside of it, and we've got this diamond here. So pretty much that means that keyframing is activated and we've got a keyframe on this frame here. And that means that the information that the scale is 100% will be stored on this frame. Just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna to go to the very first frame right now. And I'm going to go and set the scale, just type in a new value to be 4000, which is you know pretty huge. Now the scale is really big, way beyond our comp size and we notice that it's set a new keyframe here and between the two keyframes it's going to animate itself and go slowly from 4000 you can see the value changing as well as the actual scale here changing going from 4000 to 100 percent there but you'll notice something's kind of off because when it's so zoomed in it's actually zoomed into the space in the d here which means that it's still white and we're not getting this smooth transition we want it to be completely you know we want it to not be visible at all at the beginning and we want it to be like this at the end but we want it to be not at all visible at the beginning and so the way we're going to fix that is go back to one second and we're going to hit the circle next to position as well and now the position will remain in the center here but at the beginning we can change the position so you can change the position by dragging on the value here or dragging on the arrow here i'm just going to drag on the value here until i reach this point here which is where we're kind of in the gap i think we're in the d here and now between the two keyframes it'll slowly zoom out and you'll notice it's really sudden at the end that's because of course it's been scaled from such a huge number so to fix this we're just going to highlight all of these keyframes make sure you highlight the position keyframes as well otherwise it'll be a little bit off skew and just select them to be manual bezier and that'll kind of smooth them out I'm not going to show you exactly what's going on. Actually, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to change the back to linear and go into the value graph here. If I just select scale, I'm showing you this is what's going on. It goes straight from 4000 to zero. But if I select it to be manual bezier, you can see it's kind of smoothed out like so. And that's pretty much what's going on when we set all of these keyframes to be manual bezier. It kind of smooths it out. It gives us a much nicer look. That's the tutorial all done with. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, of course, follow my Twitter at shiny underscore films for more video editing tutorials and hit film tutorials like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.